Afro didn't get it. <laughs> you gotta go to Afro sir. <laughs> How's everybody? Hang in there? Okay. I want to tell you that you are going to be so glad that you came to church this morning. Alright? Because I am going to reveal to you a huge secret. And since you are here, you'll be the first to hear it. Are you ready? The temple in Jerusalem is going to be destroyed. You, you, you fail to look shocked. You fail to look surprised or bothered by this news. Why doesn't this news bring you to despair? Because we don't live there. Because you don't live there. Yeah, I mean, that's why. I mean, this is a, a long, you know, a long distance away. That's one great reason why, why it doesn't bother us. Why else? Huh? It already happened. It happened a thousand years ago. How, how, you know, I mean, how many times have you sat there and been like, man, I wish the temple hadn't been destroyed? <laughs> Anything else? How many of us have our own problems to deal with? Yeah, I mean, you know, we're busy worrying about like how we're going to put food on the table and rent and those things. I don't have a whole lot of time to worry about a temple being, being torn down. It's hard to get too worked up about a destruction of a building in a far off country a thousand years ago when we're facing real problems in our lives and in our world right now, right today. But I wonder, <coughs> If by not understanding the significance of the temple's destruction in Jesus' hearer's time, all right, do we miss out on an important teaching for our own lives? That was a long run-on sentence, so I'm going to repeat that for you. I wonder if by not understanding the significance of the temple's destruction in Jesus' hearer's time, we miss out on an important teaching for our own lives. So the Jerusalem temple, what's its main function? What do we do in the temple? Pray, worship, you know, hold church services, all right? It, just like our churches, it's a place to hear about God's love and forgiveness. And yet this doesn't capture all the roles that the temple fulfilled or what it symbolized, all right? Not only was the temple the ultimate place of worship, it was also the National Bank. I don't know if you knew this. Temples back then, you kept your money at, at the temple. All right? So uh, you, all your funds, your finances, your retirement accounts, those were in the temple. Additionally, the temple was also the capital building. And it was also the symbol of your nation. So what we're hearing this morning Imagine if Jesus told you that all your churches, not just one church, all of your churches were going to be flattened to the ground. Washington, D.C. was burnt to the ground. The American flag is lowered and never flown again. And all your savings accounts are wiped out, by the way. How would you be feeling that? Devastating. <laughs> Devastating. You know, I'm seeing some eyes like this. Yeah, I mean, it would be, you know, lost. Afraid. And I wonder if we hear it that way, maybe we see the impact of Jesus' words this morning. And understandably, right? Jesus' followers, they want to know what? They want to know, when is this going to happen, Jesus? Verse 7, teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign that this is about to take place? When? And Jesus refuses to get specific. Jesus says, it's about to happen when you, when, you, when you hear of wars and earthquakes and sicknesses and things. And I'm like, yeah, that's great, Jesus. I'm like, thanks for the tip. When haven't there been wars and natural disasters, famines and illnesses? Basically, Jesus refuses to tell his disciples and us when. He just says that there will be 
and end to the temple. Could this be the crucial word for us this morning? Could Jesus be talking about how do we go on when our temples fall? What do we do when the centerpiece of our faith is no more? How do we continue to believe when our health fails? How do we continue to have faith when we lose our jobs? When our home church closes? When a relationship self-destructs or someone that we love dearly dies? How do we go on? This is the challenging word that we get this morning from Luke's Gospel. How do we go on when things aren't going well? When God doesn't seem fair? When it seems like God abandoned us? There are many churches, many faiths, that, that, that will seem to say to you, if you're just good enough, if you just remain faithful, if you just do the right things, good things will happen to you, no bad things will happen to you. Jesus seems to disagree. In our, uh, in our text today, it says that, uh, if, if you look carefully, it's, it, I, I love this line, it, it says that you are going to be persecuted and some of you are going to be put to death, but your hair is going to look great. Right? <laughs> there's, there's a line in there, it's fantastic. At some point, temples are going to fall in your life, and you will be left asking how do I go on? Again, Jesus is less than specific as to what we are supposed to be doing while temples of health and love and security fall around us. I'd like him to give me a little bit more detail. All he says is we are called to testify. We are called to witness. What on earth does that mean? Elsewhere in the Bible, Jesus tells his, tells his disciples that the rest of the world will know us by our what? They will know we are Christians by our love. love. The world will know what we believe by how we love our neighbors and how we love our enemies. This is our call as temples fall around us. I want to tell you about my grandfather. And I know I've talked about him before, and I might have even told this story, I don't remember. But he knew about temples. And so I want to tell you about it. My grandpa Gamberger was a tall and powerful man. Well over six foot. He was a good husband. He was a kind father. And he was generous with his time and his money in the community. And I can still remember, he would stand out there in the narthex of his Lutheran church after worship, and he would greet everyone. He wanted to make sure everybody got you know, the big handshake, the slap on the back. Everybody got to feel wanted, welcome, and important. He was this larger-than-life guy. My grandfather was diagnosed with ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. For those of you who don't know what this is, basically it is the reverse of Alzheimer's, where your mind remains sharp and your body wastes away around you. My grandfather, my hero, went from being able to do anything and everything to being confined in a wheelchair, unable to make it up to go to the bathroom. I was devastated, as I'm, as I'm sure he was, to see his strong limbs wither with pain. But I can remember his response. I remember him asking his pastor for the list of shut-ins from his church so he could call them from his wheelchair and ask them how they were. Ask them how they were doing. How he could pray for them. Despite his own suffering. And my grandfather died. An awful and painful death. 
And yet, his powerful example of Christ's love within him lives on in my family and also in all of those who he reached out to. This is the example of witnessing with love while the midst of temples are falling and failing in my own life. But it can't stop there. Where in your lives? Where in your lives are the places and people that you see and experience love and compassion in despite the existence of great pain and suffering? We have a choice. All of our temples will fall. Every organization, every relationship, and eventually our own bodies. Jesus is up front with us about that. There is no fine print. We have all experienced pain and loss, and we will continue to do so. But the question is, where will it drive us? Will it drive us in on ourselves or out into the world as reflections of Christ's compassion for the poor, for the vulnerable, for the oppressed? For those of you who joined us Thursday night at the drug and alcohol addiction ed education event, you got to witness something amazing and beautiful. A mother shared her hell of accompanying her daughter through heroin addiction to help others know that they are not alone. And we had other women speak up who, who had lost children to this disease and are now raising foster children who have been taken from their addicted parents. Temples falling, love rising. How can our church stand with those who are suffering? How can our church be with those who feel like all hope is lost? And maybe, maybe you, you yourself are experiencing pain and suffering in your life. Write down those names off that prayer board as you come in. You take those with you. Pray through those this week. Prayer changes a lot. You could go out. There's a uh, sign-up sheet out in the, out in the narthex um, to, to ring bells for one hour for the Salvation Army coming up. One hour for the only soup kitchen in our town. Come to our last event this Thursday, 7 p.m., about drug and alcohol addiction. Because we're going to be learning about ways that we, as individuals and as a community, can help care for and prevent those suffering from this epidemic of addiction. Today in our gospel lesson, we learn that the temple is falling. But that's not the end of the story or the end of God's love. Thanks be to God, amen.